Hello YouTube, this is Dragonheart and welcome to Shogun 2. So this video is actually a request video by a fellow YouTuber by the name of Welsh Gaming. He watched one of my Chose of Kabe videos the other day and was slightly confused by how to play Total War games. So what I said I will do is create a tutorial video, upload it on my channel to help him out. But if there are anybody watching this video that are a little bit confused about Total War, then hopefully this video can benefit you as well. So. We're going to jump straight into a campaign and I'm going to go through all the fundamental things. So we're going to go to a single player and we're going to go on to a new campaign. As you can see the three uh, options here, Shogun 2, Rise of the Samurai and Fall of the Samurai. I'm just going to go with the base game, Shogun 2. The other two are expansion packs which you can buy on the Steam store. And we're not going to do Chosa Kabe because I'm doing a campaign with them currently. But we have loads of different factions. All Total War games have this screen, pretty much. Faction. It gives you the initial challenge, so Chosakabe is given as easy. Province is one, that's the province you start off with. It gives you the start here, and it gives you some basic stats and information about the faction. So Chosakabe, for example, can recruit superior bow infantry, increased income from farms, and reduce recruitment cost and upkeep for all bow infantry. And it gives you a brief history down below in the paragraph, saying a little bit about the Chosakabe. Same with the Shimizu. Initial challenge easy as well. They can recruit superior katana heroes, increase loyalty for all generals, can recruit superior katana samurai, and they have reduced cost and upkeep for katana samurai. And basically, the Chosokabe and the Shimizu are the two easier factions in this game. The reason for that is Shimizu has the island over here which they can try and take, and Chosokabe also has an island which it can try and take as well. But we're going to start off with a different faction in this game, I think we're going to go with the Darte clan. So the Darte clan's initial challenge is normal. The start year is 1545. They start off with one province. They have a charge bonus to all units. They can recruit superior Nodachi samurai and reduce recruitment, reduce recruitment cost and upkeep for Nodachi samurai. Okay, so I usually play on legendary difficulty, but I'm going to lower it slightly because this is for beginners after all. Um, we go with very hard difficulty. We'll put it on short campaign and we will hit the start button. So we're greeted by a loading screen. These usually take a few minutes depending on your GPU and CPU, etc. etc. And I'm going to explain now when the campaign starts why I picked the Dartic Clan. And the reason for that really is because the Darte they start the location, they're isolated at the top, so you know you can't get outflanked. But also the land is so big in their home province that it's difficult to actually uh, attack another faction on the first turn. You, you actually can't. Okay, so we're going to skip the intro and we're going to skip the little chapter there. So basically, just to quickly recap, every, well, most campaigns apart from Rome 2 have an intro video at the start of the faction that you pick. And straight away we are greeted by a mission issued. Tanimune's fall, our clan has been griped by civil strife since the disagreements, blah blah blah. Okay, so basically it's a rebellion and it's in the foreign province which is Iwate. If we put down the rebellion, we get inspired endeavours. And what that does is it gives us plus 25% wealth generated by buildings across all provinces. So this is it. This is the Darte land. All of what you can see right now is under our control. Here we have a border. These are important. You can't see the other side of the border. That's because it's the fog of war. In all Total War games, there is a fog of war. If you look at the top right hand side of the map you can see where the fog is, it's most of the map. We can see Miyagi down here, the reason for that is this clan here, the Hatakyama, are actually at peace with us, they're neutral and they are trading. To find this out you click on the diplomacy tab, this gives you an overview of all the different factions. It's important that you understand the diplomacy in Total War games, they're the one, one of the main factors of understanding your economy and your empire. So. Date, Date Harimune, power is moderate, prosperity is moderate, province one, have no vassals, have no allies, we do have a trade partner in the Hatakyama, and we do have our enemies, the Mogami. Mogami are over here, in Ugo, if you hover over you can see it says Mogami. And here, we have the rebels, Date Tanimune. If you click on him, you can see he has five units. We don't know what three of them are, that's because we're not close enough. We do know what two of them are, Yari Samurai and Yari Ashigaru. Yari Ashigaru are the most basic unit 
in Shogun 2 when they're also one of the best that you can recruit. A very strong, fully leveled Yari Ashigaru can beat just about anything in this game. If I click on this tab right here, we have the Mastery of Arts. Bushido is all military stuff, so for example, if I click this one, that's telling me in two turns time, I will learn Bushido, and that is the Way of the Warrior. That enables plus one morale for all of my units. It enables me to build a sword school, and that sword school will enable me to recruit Katana Samurai. Once I get that strand, I can decide to go for Strategy of Attack, which will give me a Siege Engineer's Workshop, it will give me Firebomb Throwers, and will give me a plus two charge bonus for my units. Don't forget that the Date do already have a charge bonus. Combined with a plus two charge bonus for with this uh, Siege Engineer's Workshop, can make your charges devastating. Or you can go for the strategy of defense, which is plus one, plus one defense for all units, Naginata Dojo and Naginata Samurai. And you can just keep going down the strands until you find something that you want to aim for. Personally, I like to go for Heaven and Earth. That gives my bow units in the Chosokabe campaign plus 50% ammunition for all bow units and plus 5% to unit replenishment. And then you've got the way of Chi, so we get a market. Markets are really useful in this game. When, if you can build a market, you can recruit a Metsuke. A Metsuke can basically um, improve the happiness in your provinces while at the same time uh, bringing some more money, bringing some more money with the tax that you have in your provinces. This is our province here of Iwate. As you can see, anything that's got two yellow arrows going up shows that it can be built. So, for example, we already have a blacksmith. But we can either go for an armorer to give us plus two armor for samurai and ashigaru units, or weaponsmith plus two attack for samurai or ashigaru units. I can go for a harbor. Harbors are useful. If I get a harbor, I can upgrade to a trade import. If I get a trade import, I can then trade with more factions. We have trails. Want to get roads? Roads are important because plus two percent replenishment rate. A weakened unit will replenish much quicker if you've got better roads. We have rice paddles, or paddies I should say. Is it paddles or paddies? I can't even tell if it's an Ioni or an L. I think it's L. <laughs> My brain just farted. Anyway, rice paddles, these are important for food. On the bottom right hand side, we have food. Zero's at the moment, that's okay. Want we'll to try and get that the plus, especially when you start taking over provinces all over the map. It's vital that you improve your food. Clan income, so we're currently making 1,089 Koku and we currently have 2,000 in our in our treasury. We can of course increase that so we can put our taxes with this tab, the finance tab, up to ha very high and as, as you can see the money just gone up. If put it very low, the money goes right down. Of course if you put it high or very high, people get unhappy. More taxes mean more unhappy people, so we must keep that in mind when you're playing this game. And also on the finance tab as well, it shows you that what my tax is bringing in, so it's 450, and my trade with the Hatakyama is bringing in plus 100 so far. You can look into this with more details, as you can see, value 100. So I'm exporting tariffs and I'm importing iron, and it's through a land route, so it gives you a little bit of a breakdown of your trade, and a summary then of all your income, your profits, etc. Clan management is important, so this is a basically an overview page so we have the victory conditions here we currently have Iwate which is our home province but we have to get six listed provinces held and they are Fukushima, Miyagi, Ugo, Uzen and the capital Kyoto additionally we've got to get 25 altogether so basically you need to take over about two-thirds of the map I think it is or about half the map with also the six provinces listed and you've also got to hold the shogunate for about four turns until you become shogun Below that we have Tanimune's Fall, this gives you the missions which can be issued to you. You can also cancel the missions if you want to, but most of them are pretty uh, easy to do. The fame by here is obscure, that's because we just started out. The more battles you win, the more honour you gain, the higher your fame increases. Once you get to the top, that's when the Realm Divide happens. Once Realm Divide, divide happens, basically all the factions declare war on you, and it means that the end game becomes a lot more challenging. This gives us our religion, Shinto Buddhism. If you're a Christian clan and you have Shinto Buddhism buildings, you may get a lot of trouble in your province, or vice versa. I think there's another faction as well. Uh, yeah, that's right, the Iko Iki, they also have their own religion as well. Treasure again, food supply again, our prosperity, our provinces, and our stronghold. And of course, we have another brief overview of the diplomacy in the bottom left. 
and also gives me a list of traits so for instance if I do this reward now this mission and I get inspired endeavors that will pop up by here we have the family and council this is important as well so by here this guy by here is the most important guy in this game at the moment he is my daimyo my faction leader his name is Date Harimune he's 26 years of age he's a rank 1 general and he has 3 honor you can right click on him to give a brief overview so here we are he's self centered so he gets plus 1 melee attack he's casually brutal so he gets one pl plus 1 repression and he's distrustful so he gets minus 5% chance of being assassinated these are good traits to start off with not too bad this is his wife Date Karu and they have two children Terimune and Yog Yomog bleh, Yomogi I can make it once they once they get to about I think 17 years of age they come of age and they will be generals we also have two generals here well one of them is 18 hasn't come of age yet Date Sanimuto but we have my commissioner for warfare Date Yoshinori he's a one star general as well but he has a bit more honour he's got four he's dependable but he's not in my family he's just brothers but you can marry into your family if you've got the right uh, people there if for example my daimyo dies then he will become the heir no he won't Date Teramune will become the heir but I think he would take charge if my daimyo died anyway it, it seems a bit complicated but trust me it's not so now we're going to look at uh, the battle system in this game Date Yoshinori is here we have five units they have five units but I'm going to try and give myself an advantage. I have my other general here, Date Harimune. I'm going to put him on the border here. What I'm doing is basically holding on the right mouse button. and I, I, As you can see, there's a red arrow pointing towards him. That means that he can deploy in this battle. So I'm going to move him there. The reason I'm going to do this separately and not have them all in one stack is because if you have generals in separate stacks, they both level up. If they were both in one stack, so for example, if I put this guy in with him now, they would not level up at the same time, only one of them would. So what we're going to do now is charge with the right click of the mouse button. And this is the battle screen. So this goes over all the different units that are going to be in the battle. So my force is Date Yoshinori, Yari Samurai, two units of Yari Ashigaru, and one unit of bow. They have one unit of bow as well, two units of Yari Ashigaru, one unit of Yari Samurai, and their general is Yari Cavalry. That's the only difference. And of course I have my my Daimyo Date Harimune reinforcing. They have 800, I have 760 plus 40, so it's 800 each. And as you can see, I could auto-resolve this, but auto-resolving is a bit unpredictable in Total War games. Sometimes you can auto-resolve and your general will die. It's better to take charge of most of the battles, and that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm just going to hit... Oops! Uh-oh. Didn't want to click that. Ah, no, 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 no. Okay, I don't know whether... Somebody just dropped into that battle then, uh oh. <laughs> I might be fighting against the human player here. I hope not, otherwise this tutorial might become a lot harder. <laughs> I accidentally clicked the wrong button then. Oopsie. Even experienced players can make mistakes. That's probably the, the most fun thing with Total War though. It's the mistakes you make. Le That's how I learned to play this game. I watched other, other YouTubers. I then learned from trial and error myself. Played the game, played a few campaigns. Looked at what I did wrong and eventually increase my difficulty in games. I can now play at a reasonable level on legendary difficulty in most Total War games. Well, I think it's, only, it's actually only two that have legendary difficulties, this game and Rome 2, but I can play on very hard on the other games as well now. Years ago when I first started playing, I couldn't play those difficulties. That was quite terrible actually. But anyway, we're going to hit the start button. And where are the enemy? They're over here. Can't tell if this if this uh, enemy is controlled by the human players or not. I don't think they are. I think we're okay. <laughs> Quite funny the mistakes you make. Anyway, this is my use my unit shirt. Date Yashinori. I want to keep him alive in this battle. Just drag him over there. And of course my general over here reinforcing. We're gonna bring him nearby as well. I'm going to have a quick look at our units. So, Yari Ashigaru, this is what they look like. 
they would probably be the backbone of your army in most of your Shogun 2 campaigns. Have a quick look at the detail in here. Press the end button to zoom and I'm using the scroll wheel to move around. Quite good detail on the units. We have some bow Ashigaru as well. And then Yari Samurai. All look great, all look fantastic. Now what I'm going to do is group my units together. So I'm going to click on the Yari Ashigaru, I'm going to hold down control and click the second unit and then going to press, press G. That groups them together. If I just press G on its own, it will lock them. That means that look, they'll stay like they are. However, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to have them as a group which I can move around to my own will. Like that. All with the right button, hold it down, click, drag them. Additionally, you can just click straight away and they'll move there without positioning. I like to position them though. So I'll do it like that. My bow units, probably good to put them behind so they don't get caught in any kind of firefight. Bring cavalry to the left flank, bring cavalry to the right flank. So a pretty sound strategy to begin with. Cavalry on either flank, bows behind, infantry in the front. Pretty standard. You will, as you play the game, you will learn your own different strategies. As you can see, the AI is only showing me three units when we know they have five. That's because two of the units are most likely hidden in the bush by here. Units can hide if you hover over them and look at the right-hand side. You can see some of the stats. So, for instance, my general here, Date Harumune, he's resistant to morale shocks and he has good stamina. My bow Ashigaru, however, can hide in light scrub and can also hide in woodland. And that's probably what they have in here, Bo Ashigaru. Anyway, moving forward, we can actually move these two units first. Yari Ashigaru, followed by Yari Samurai, and then the Bo finally. Bring the cavalry to the left flank, bring the cavalry to the right flank. On the top right, of course, you can see the map as well. The three red dots, they show the enemy, and the yellow dots show us. The kind of white dot shows which unit I'm selecting, look. If you look, look at the map, you can see me select different units. And if I click on the bow Ashigaru, you can see these red lines. That shows me the distance of which they can hit. So I know if I can move them forward a little bit further, their range will get much closer. That's what I'm hoping to do to begin with. Just try and pick off a few units, if possible. It's also important to know what the special abilities of units are. For example, the Yari Ashigaru can go into a Yari wall. This is very formidable against full-on charges. As you can see, the enemy is now starting to come towards me. What I'm going to do is try and kite the enemy's bow units. By doing this, I'm going to drag my men back and force them to come towards me. By doing this, I'm making sure the enemy is far enough away from its reinforcements try and get a clean charge unit and take it out. Don't forget the Dart A does have a very good charge bonus. It's something you want to try to utilize as as often as you possibly can in this game. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. Giving myself a chance. Pull the units back. They are set up to fire. They are about to fire. Let's move back. Try and kite them a bit further. And again, they get moving forward. They've taken the bait, they're moving away from their reinforcements. The AI can sometimes be exploitable in this game. That's kind of what I'm doing right now. I'm exploiting the AI to come forward towards me. I can keep doing this all day. They haven't got a single shot on me yet. All I'm doing is dragging my units about. And soon, I think now would probably would be a good time to go for a charge on the Bo Ashigaru with my general. So here you go, Date Harimune is going to charge in. And I'll keep this down, the mouse over his unit card, and you'll see how many kills he gets. Oh, he's getting shots away. Damn it. So he did get a shot away, but look at this. Flashing straight away, wavering. I caught him cold, and they've gone. They're shattered straight away, and now the enemy can react. So we're going to react quickly as well. Bring our units forward. The general's going to get some kills. Probably wise to bring him out now. Probably wise to bring my men back in as well. Close ranks. Get as close as possible. 
and it looks like they are not going to come and charge me. That's okay. I'm going to push right up in their face. Now, they have no bow unit, so I know I can charge my bows in, take some shots on them without fear of losing men. So far, I've lost three men, that's all. Not, not bad. Although, it was possible there to not lose any. Quickly put Yari Wall on. Try and attack cavalry here. And pull the bow units back quickly as well. I've caught the cavalry. The Yari Cav's been caught, that's good. Yari amazing. Bring the Yari Samurai up. Close ranks. Bring all my cavalry to the flank. Bow units are charging. And now it's a case of picking them off. I can see the charges from my bows. So I can drag my bows quickly and try to intercept them with my general. Our general is in grave danger, my lord. And now we're gonna sandwich the Yari Cav. Oh, the Yari Cav's got my bow. That's good for them. Not good for me. Oh no. Time to use some special abilities, maybe a rally or two to help tip the favour back towards me. Try and take the Yari Cav out quickly. I got a unit being wasted here, which could be useful over here instead. Here we go, now they're starting to waver. The Yari Cavalry is wavering, and they're gone. Worked in the end, just about. Not the cleanest of battles, but it's good enough. Yari Ashgar are shattered, and they're all shattered. So as you can see, we haven't lost, we lost a few men, but not as bad as it could have been. And to reflect on that battle, I'd probably say that I wasn't quick enough in my micromanaging. That's something you get better on the more you play. What I'm gonna do now though, I've clicked continue battle. You think that's probably silly because the battle's over, I've already won, what's the point in playing? But the reason why I'm doing this is, as you can see by here, there's a chevron on my general. He leveled up in this battle. There's a possibility that this guy could level up as well. Look at his bar on the right hand side, you can see he's got 23 kills, 24, 27, 29, and his experience is going up. The more chevrons you have shows the more battles you've won, it helps increase your stats. As you can see my charge bonus now got a little bit of a green dot by it, it means my charge bonus is even better now. I think that'll probably do for this battle, so I'm going to click the escape button and quit battle. Close victory, as I said it could have been a lot better on reflection. But I got the job done in the end, and that's all that really matters, really. Do 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 bam bam bam. And the good thing with Total War as well, you get these nice little messages on the bottom of the screen in the loading screens usually. So this gives us a breakdown of what happened there. So 800 each. I lost 228, they lost nearly 500, I got nearly 600 remaining, they got 309 remaining, so I didn't kill them off completely, which is a shame. They escaped because I didn't kill enough of them, it means I gotta deal with them again. Now I can't quite, oh I can, I can actually reach them with this army here, that's exactly what we're gonna do. I'm gonna run in and charge, only 3 units, I could auto resolve this one, I'm not going to because my general, yeah if I... Okay, actually, I will show you because we'll see how many we lose. So I got 543. I'm going to auto resolve. And we lost some men. We lost 58 men. And we fortunate that time. As you can see, my units got quite a bit of experience. Two rank twos now, and a couple of rank ones as well. He is now gone. Mission successful. So we successfully completed the mission, and we now have inspired endeavors. That gives us plus 25 wealth generated by all buildings. And my general increased as well. Excellent. As you can see, he got two stars now. So I right click on him. And I can hire a retainer. So I got two things I can go for here. A Kanchi poet. That gives him plus one loyalty if he's general or honor if he's a daimyo. Or I can go for a jujitsu master, which gives him plus one command during ambushes. It's totally up to you what you pick. Some really good ones and some really bad ones. I'm going to go with the Kanchi Poet. And then we have a skill tree. We have a warrior, which can give him plus one defense for this general and his bodyguard. Or we can go for the strategist. I tend to go for strategist. So he gets plus 10 campaign movement. And now he gets plus 20. 
means that his sphere of influence is a bit bigger when he's walking around the map. And that 2,000 money that we have, we will probably try and spend now, so it's probably wise to upgrade to a stronghold in case the Mogami do an attack us. I don't have much money left now though. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to click the end turn button to show you the first turn. That's basically your average first turn in a total war. Some people think about the turns on a dramatic level and they nitpick at everything and won't click the end turn button until they're happy with everything. Some people like me tend to be more lax with, with what they do on the campaign map. Like I could have probably checked quite a lot of things then, been a bit more thorough but I decided not to. And now it's probably a good idea to go on the offensive. Now what I can do is go right up to the border and by going to the border I can see what's in the province by here. If I cross the border however I won't replenish. If you look by here now, can't be replenished. Go back to my side, back to replenished. I'm also going to bring my general right up as well to reinforce in case we get attacked up here. We're just going to sit on the border and attack them. I think their province is up here, that building is. And Iwate can now be upgraded I think as well, so probably want to get some roads as well. And then if we click on the diplomacy tab, we'll see if we can get any kind of alliance maybe. Greetings. It is always now, this is where you might good to exploit the, the enemy. Come to take tea maybe not. Talk of many things. 500 will try. Sometimes you can get money out of your enemy. We're just going to try and see if we can get something out of them at all. So as you can see we can get 100 Koku. That seems fair. And there we go. So now they're military allies. If I end this alliance at any time, I will suffer um, diplomatic relations with other clans. And they're very friendly towards me now. If I hover over where these, these carts are, these people are, it shows you the value of the trade. So 192 and 102. So I'm getting the better deal there. I'm getting a lot more than they are. Nearly 100 more. And of course there's naval battles as well, but I'm not going to go into the specifics of naval battles in this episode. Uh, there's trade nodes up here. Trade nodes are good. Basically, if I upgrade my harbour, my coastal village to a harbour, and then a harbour to a trade import, I can recruit trading ships. Basically, with those trading ships, I can drag them up here, pop them on by here, and trade. On the map up here, you can see there's a lot more. There's trade with the Jurchen tribes for war horses. There's Korean Kingdom. There's the Chinese Empire, the Annamese warlords, and Indonesian Sultanates. So you can trade with different people. And then you basically get the same thing, you get a line going all the way to your port, which would be here. And if you hover over that line, it shows you how much you're making, how much you're exporting, etc. I'm going to click end turn again. See if the Mogami attack us this turn. As we go through the end turn phase. And they didn't attack us. Art mastered way of chi, so we finally have that now. And we're automatically going to study Zen. If you're not happy with that though, you can obviously change it. Uh, mission issue to another say and capture a province belonging to the following clan the Mogami if I do that I will have dreaded force which gives me fear in enemies and it reduces their morale that's a good thing to go for I'm gonna see how far we can travel with my general so go this far then we go this far I don't think we can go much further but what we can do is if I put my cursor here it shows a little tree underneath it that shows that I can lay an ambush so that's exactly what we're going to do he will automatically go down now like that. Might put my general just behind him as well. Like so. Now he's not in ambush mode, so he's sticking out like a sore thumb. But if someone does come down here to attack me, they'll get sprung with an ambush before they get to me. Great clan has been destroyed, the Tokugawa. Iwate, we can trade. Oh, what do we want? I think we'll go for the harbour and we'll also go with the improved irrigation. Basically that gives us better food which is what we need at the moment. And if you click on the province it shows you how many turns it takes. So one turn, three turns, one turns and two turns. So again, turn again. The next thing that I think should be the seasons. If I've calculated this right, we should be in winter right now. On the next turn. Let's see. Yes we are. Food shortage, Iwate. So as you can see there's a food shortage now. Minus one. We've because we've built the stronghold, we get another slot. We can build things in. So I can now go for a Yari drill yard if I want to get some 
uh, Yari Samurai or Dati Bulletproof Samurai. A Sake Den, which is good for province happiness and can also uh, recruit ninjas. The stables, what I like to go for, and that's exactly what I'm going to go for here. Archery Dojo for Bow Samurai and the market for the Metsuke. I'm going to go with the stables so I can get war horses. And now, as you can see, my army is suffering from attrition. That's because I'm on an enemy territory and I'm not close enough to my home province therefore I suffer attrition my men start to die which isn't good I'm not gonna bring my man forward and try to attack and as we can see Ugo is here if only four units are in there just gonna settle my general down there like so he's gonna lay an ambush got two ambushes nearby my only problem is they might spot me over there and of course I'm gonna lose men this turn as well because of the attrition three more turns for the stables two for the irrigation and one for the harbour end turn again and I think I'll probably make this the last turn now in this in this uh, tutorial and the Mogami have gone straight past me <laughs> they've made a big blunder so the AI can do stupid things sometimes um, on legendary they don't tend to do that many stupid things but as you can see on the lower difficulties, it can sometimes be the case. So what we can do basically is attack Ugo. And as you can see, they've only got one unit there. I can basically auto-resolve this battle, which I will. Auto-resolve. And victory. We only lost nine men. That was a good auto-resolve for us. And we can peacefully occupy Ugo. We could loot it as well, but we get minus 15 public order. I peacefully occupy him, we just get the minus seven instead. We get dreaded force as well for six turns. I can double click Ugo and if I want to reduce the unhappiness I can exempt them from tax although that still doesn't get me out of the water. The best thing to do is try and build some buildings here so for example the fort is damaged I'm going to repair this for a cost of 19 koku. I can then go for some proof irrigation again to give me more wealth and more food. Some roads for better replenishment, coastal village, and they have a quarry this time, so a different build, different building, and that can be upgraded to a stonemason. But we're going to go for the improved irrigation, and we're also going to build. Uh, it's gone a market, so I can get the Metsuke. Now the Mogami, if that was their last settlement, would be obliterated. But as you can see, they're still here. That's because they actually start off with two provinces, and they have Uzen down here. So our aim in this campaign would be to hold them off here at Ugo and then go, go down here and take Uzen. But anyway, I think I've covered pretty much most of the basics. If there is anything else that you want me to cover, let me know and I'll do a follow-up video. I hope this helps you, Welsh Gaming, and I hope it helps anybody else that is a beginner to the Total War franchise. I've been Dragonheart, hope you've enjoyed, thank you for watching, and goodbye.